Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? Hope it's fantastic. Everything here is great. I had a topic to discuss today, uh, but I think my brain has been erased by the contents of this bottle. Um, this is something that I didn't know existed until recently. I mean, now that I know what it is and I have experience with it, I can tell you that I recognize this in a lot of different places in different ways. And when I tell you what it is, I could, I could describe it to you and you'll know what I'm talking about. But I didn't know this was a thing until I watched a video recently. It's an older video, but I just watched it recently and I learned a little bit about it. And this is something I cannot pronounce. Um... D limonene limonene highest purity food grade citrus solvent this is a solvent that is made from orange peel and this is like blue bonnet industries highest grade version of this solvents like anything turpentine alcohol water as a solvent um acetone, you know, there's lots of chemical solvents. This one is all natural, and it's used to make natural, food-safe finishes for woodworking. People will use this to thin things down. Um, and I, I came across, I didn't know this existed. Like, I, now that I smell it, uh, this is like what's, if you've ever used Mechanics Hand Soap, Gojo is one of the, you know, orange soaps you will know that oh it's made out of this like duh and i guarantee you this probably cuts oil and grease just as good as any other chemical solvent but but here's the interesting thing uh, it is this is sealed like this is um it's got one of those little press seals on it and the bottle is still compressed from vacuum this is sealed but the box it came in was damp and it now smells like I've got an orange processing facility in my house. It's really assaulted my nose. I, I love the smell of oranges. My kid does not, so she's not going to be happy when she comes home from school. But I learned about this recently um, as a way to make a food-safe finish for cutting boards. I've got one here, a tiny one that I made recently for myself. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to use this for because it's basically too small to be a cutting board, but I had never really made an in-grade cutting board before, so I wanted to try it. Um, the experiment went well. Uh, I've got I had no huge gaps or anything. It was good. Uh, and I, I, I wasn't even aware that you could put drying oils on a cutting board. I've always used mineral oil. Years and years and years and years, I've just put mineral oil and then maybe some beeswax. Uh, but the thing about mineral oil is it just leaches. It leaches out. And I feel like on a cutting board like this, where the straws are going this way, it's just it'll eventually leach out of it completely. And um, that's not beneficial. But what I've discovered, one, I've discovered that some people use tongue oil on cutting boards. And it's perfectly safe and there's nothing wrong with it. Never thought of it. it never, yeah, never, never even occurred to me. Some people use linseed oil. That never occurred to me either. If you use all natural linseed oil or maybe a product like Tried and True's um, uh, quote boiled linseed oil, uh, it, that would be fine. It, and it's completely food safe. You could drink that stuff out of the can. But I've never thought about putting it on a cutting board because I always think of a cutting board as something that requires a lot of maintenance. Uh, something that you, like, you wash and you reapply constantly because mineral oil when you it'll just wash right off right so <laughs> here's the thing i have made a lot of cutting boards a lot of cutting boards i do not own a wooden cutting board <laughs> never used one uh, my mom bought me one years ago and it was just a really nice piece and I didn't want to use it. So I just had it on display for a long time. Uh, I've never used one. I, I've always just used plastic. 
So I decided to experiment, make myself one, and then I, so this has been sitting in a shop for a while. I I've, I've really hesitated to to do anything with it um, because number one, it's tiny. Like I don't know what I would cut on this. Maybe cheese or something. It'd be a good little cheese board. Uh, and number two, I, I um. Well, I just haven't been working down here. But I watched a video recently from Mark uh, Spagnolo, the wood whisperer, who talked about using tongue oil, regular old, you know, 100% pure tongue oil on cutting boards. And he talked about this stuff. And he said he had a cutting board from that somebody made that um, he mixed 50-50 uh, uh, citrus solvent with tongue oil and the cutting board has never been refinished and it's been going for years and years and years and I thought that's pretty nifty I'm gonna give it a shot so here we are um, we're gonna give this a go not today this isn't nearly ready it's um, it's probably sanded to about 120 I usually do cutting boards to 150 um, I don't really see a need to go beyond that for a cutting board <laughs> and it's smooth enough but this uh, this still has sharp edges I haven't sanded um, so I started to sand the sides and realized that sanding the sides of a end grain cutting board, you, you have to sand this way and it's really awkward. So I've got to figure out a better solution for that. Round the corners, do all that sort of stuff to turn it into an, a functional cutting board or maybe a trivet or something like that. But we're going to experiment with a little bit of finish. And I'm curious to know if you have used, if any of you have used, um, number one, citrus solvent. Uh, this is really pungent. And... It, I like it. Or if you've used a drying oil on your cutting boards. Never occurred to me. In fact, I keep, um, I keep... I keep the old Howard's Butcher Block Conditioner around. This is just beeswax and mineral oil. Because this is what I've always thought to use. It never occurred to me to put a drying oil on there. But whew, this wiped my brain. I had no idea what I had a topic for today, and um, ended up strong stuff. Thank you for being here as always. <laughs> Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know to sound smart is pathological. It's an adjective meaning compulsive in nature, possessing of a belief system or mindset that makes one unable to resist repetition of a particular type of behavior. Example, a pathological liar. Diane's pathological need for attention has caused her on more than one occasion to plant lies about herself in the society pages. Pathological, P-A-T-H-O-L-O-G-I-C-A-L. It's obviously not the only definition, right? Like, you can have a, a pathological condition, right? It's like, just won't go away. Is that correct? What do I know?